When we first arrived, uh, there was basically no developed tourism in the Black Hills. They were in the process of carving Mount Rushmore, and there were a couple of rock shops and rodeos, and that was the extent of it. And of course, we know that this has developed into one of the um, prime tourism areas in the country, and people even from abroad have come specifically to see the Black Hills. I grew up in Spearfish. Uh, my family here had the Black Hills Passion Play, uh, with which I was very closely associated from the time I was an infant. And uh, later on, um, went to school here. Spearfish has always been my home. Um, we acquired uh, a ranch north of town, and later on, uh, after I was an adult and married, my husband and I were able to acquire the Oak Hills Ranch property here. It had been uh, dear to me all throughout my childhood. I used to ride up here. The owner was very generous in allowing me to do that. And uh, so this uh, ranch property and this hillside and these views have been something that I've cherished all of my life. I'm Johanna Meyer Della Vecchia and we are on Oak Hills Ranch, which is uh, a beautiful property west uh, of Spearfish. I've been on this ranch since I was born here in Spearfish, and my grandfather helped put the terracing in so that the erosion would stop after the dirty 30s. Um, my father, all his brothers have worked on the ranch, my brother, um, now my children, and my grandson will be here. My husband started pulling bales at eight years old when he was growing up just over the hill. We were seven years old when we met. The ranch is a, a, a very uh, unique piece of property. It's very close to spearfish, but at the same time, wilderness. We have big open fields with grassland. We have timber. Uh, for timber harvesting, and the cattle and horses that we have roam the whole entire ranch. Our idea is that we never wanted to see it change. This was a happy place. This is the place to be. And we see houses popping up everywhere, and it's heartbreaking. There's a lot of people that have come here throughout their lives and stuff, and they can just remember looking up and, and seeing the openness and the, the view of the land. And right now, you know, Spearfish is such a beautiful place to move and live to. And what we're seeing, though, is the, the building of the houses and the urbanization of the area. And part of those views that we all, that drive these people here to these beautiful areas are starting to disappear. And so it's kind of a, a double-edged sword. You know, people want to move here, but at the same time, we're losing, in essence, the beauty of the place. And so. Uh, really with this land trust and everything, we're going to preserve that, preserve these views, um, so that way we can, you know, still work the land, still have this lifestyle. And with the cattle here, we're going to continue to allow them to work, to, to be here on the land, to graze, um, to use the land as intended. And in essence, you know, it's going to help bring, bring that life back to this piece of property versus it just being stale and, and not utilized. When we first had the idea of uh, trying to uh, make uh, a conservancy of this property, we in did a lot of investigating of, um, of organizations throughout the country, uh, some federal, some privately handled. Um, and then when this uh, opportunity arose, it seemed to fulfill all of our, all of our wishes. And the fact that uh, things would remain protected and undeveloped, but still accessible and be able to be used as ag land, which we do. We lease out, lease out for cattle and we have horses up here. And it's also uh, a natural uh, wildlife corridor and habitat for a variety of wildlife. And so we were very pleased to have, uh, have come upon this organization. And I especially felt that it was uh, worthwhile because it was a South Dakota organization and would be monitored by the trust and my ties are here and so I was very very glad to have come upon that. You know Johanna uh, and I and, and Terry we, we had sat down and 
tossed it back and forth and she really wanted to preserve the property. Um, she wanted to keep it as it is today or it has been for the last several years. We did look at several different conservation groups. We like the South Dakota Ag Land Trust because we have the same goals. And they were willing to work with us over and over, back and forth, and um, it, it just was a perfect fit. The South Dakota Ag Land Trust was founded uh, a number of years ago by four different organizations. The South Dakota Association of Conservation Districts, the South Dakota Cattlemen's Association, the South Dakota Farm Bureau, and the South Dakota Grassland Coalition. And the organization was founded because there was a, a lot of interest in South Dakota for conservation easements, but no organization was solely controlled by farmers and ranchers. And so our goal was to, to form an organization, a nonprofit, that would hold conservation easements for the purpose of preserving working lands uh, for the future generations to enjoy. It always it seems to me uh, a little bit difficult when uh, areas around the country are managed by uh, organizations in uh, eastern cities and uh, they don't really know the landscape, they don't know the people, they don't know the climate and the atmosphere and uh, this way I think uh, we have absolutely the best protection that we could have because these are all local people who value what they have here. These guys are all from South Dakota. They have their own ranches, they have their own properties, so they know what it is. We have uh, the board from the state organization who will um, manage and monitor uh, the property. So we feel very well covered and very well protected. Uh, it does give us uh, tremendous opportunities for conservation uh, on many levels. Aside from the beauty factor, um, it, uh, it does preserve grasslands, natural grasslands, and uh, quality of water which is flowing downstream from springs on this property. Uh, there's continued development uh, and urbanization of our area. And that was a large concern in uh, the watershed above us. We, uh, we can't afford to have septic systems and wells in a high number that would ultimately affect the groundwater supply. After I'm gone, I'm very grateful that there are younger people who feel the same way. And uh, I hope that, uh, that this will always be um, a focal point for those people who love natural beauty and uh, all of the benefits that we gain from uh, being nature's friend.